I think in industry as a whole, we don't necessarily have a good way, objective way to measure someone's financial health, right? And I think we often tend to focus on some vanity metrics of what financial health is rather than what actually makes up a financially healthy person or household. Justin Green is the founder of Assist FP, a registered investment advisor in the state of Massachusetts. Colton Etherton is a financial advisor and founder of Out of the Office Planning, a registered investment advisor in the state of Oregon. This podcast is for informational purpose only and is not advice. All opinions expressed by the host or their guests are solely theirs and do not reflect Assist FP or Out of the Office Planning. Talk to your advisor if you have any questions. What's up, Colton? How's it going? Justin, what's up, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good. So you've been texting me about this this thought you've been having that we want to dive into on the episode today. So I'm pretty excited to dive into that with you. So I'm going to mm-hmm. kind of let you take the reins here and, and lead the discussion. No, I've been thinking about it, Justin. Um, as it comes to you know our industry and advisors, um, let me ask you this. If someone were to come to you today, how could you really tell you know how they're doing? Like, how are they doing today and are they quote unquote financially healthy? Yeah, super interesting question because I don't think that's that's not exactly what we learned when we went to school to be a financial planner, right? If we mm-hmm. even went to school. I mean, I know we both have the certified financial planner designation, but that doesn't necessarily mean most advisors go to school for this. Um, so it's a really good question because I think traditionally we're trained to look 30, 40 years right retirement planning scenarios Mm -hmm. um but this kind of new wave of financial planning financial advice we work with uh individuals who are our age right and so i think when i'm looking to see like okay are you financially healthy i want to dive into one how you view money like that's the first Mm -hmm. part which is not a it's not a quantitative metric right so we can't necessarily say you have x amount of views on money right like it's not a net worth figure where i can kind of measure mm-hmm. that and, and say yes this is a good range so it's very subjective um and i kind of lean on a lot of uh a lot of psychology and behavioral um coaching to kind of really get to the root of, of that to understand how a client feels about their money and, and where that falls on like a term of healthy or unhealthy the next thing I kind of want to look at is like, okay, what is their current situation? And a big part of that's going to be like, what habits do they have in place? So first thing I'm going to look at is their cash flows. Do they spend more or less than what they earn? Um, sometimes you'll find out they have no clue. And so you have mm-hmm. to start there. The other thing I want to look at is like, what are they saving? So what's their plan saving? investing are they so sometimes people are really good savers but they don't invest it so you know they'll have a large amount of cash because they're just they're not confident they're a little insecure about investing or they just don't know where to invest it Mm -hmm. Um, so i'm also looking at that let's see overall do they have any plan in place right are they following any sort of direction whether it's their own personal plan or a plan that someone else helped them create i'm trying to see like is there direction or are they just doing it to do it, which isn't always a bad case if they're doing the right, if they have the right habits in place. Mm-hmm. Mm, those would be a lot of the big ones. I'm sure I missed a couple. I'll throw yeah. it back at you. What did I miss there that you would also take a look at? Yeah, I mean, before before I jump into that, you know, and obviously you and I have talked a ton. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, what I, mean? I, I, I kind of knew where you're going with that answer. Um, and I think, you know, you have a really good handle on you know looking at the financial health for people right i think as an industry as a whole though right um and and taking a step back and then i'll I'll get into you know other things to look at but i think in industry as a whole we don't necessarily have a good way objective way to measure someone's financial health right and i think we often tend to focus on some vanity metrics of what financial health is rather than what actually makes up a financially healthy person or household, you know what I mean? Whatever, however you want to group that. Um, you know, I think we, we tend to look at net worth and see if, you know, that means someone's financially healthy, right? Oh, someone has X amount of money. They're doing great. Right. Um, and I think that, 
again, going back to the vanity reference, that's looking at someone with a six pack and saying that they're completely healthy inside and out, right? Just because they may be shredded. And I think, I think that's a poor way to look at it because, you know, again, keeping with the health reference, right? That person could have some stuff going on internally, right? Um, blood pressure, whatever, could be totally off, right? Uh, and I think that's the same with, same with finances. Um, and you, you hit on the, I think a lot of the big important ones, right? First, starting with their mentality towards money, right? What's your relationship with money like? Kind of similar to the mental health, if you will, of the, the financial health picture, right? Why is money important to you? Do you actually understand that? Like, are you operating out of these money beliefs and habits that were formed when you were younger that you, most people, honestly, and you know, this don't recognize, right? And then, you, you know, you mentioned cash flow, right? Like, are you actually using your income to get you to where you want to go? Like, are, are we saving the right amount? Does it make sense? Are we also spending an amount that makes sense and you're not, you know, depraving yourself just to save more, you know, only eating in chicken and rice just to get the six pack, even though you're miserable. All right. I'll draw the line there. <laughs> I had to throw that in. I had to throw that in with your, uh, for those of you listening, Justin and I always joke that he, uh, only eats chicken and rice cause he's, he's very much into fitness and it's, being healthy. It's only half a joke. Uh, let me hop in here real quick. So <laughs> yeah. sorry, I went on a, a rant there. Yeah, no, no, you're good. You're good. Um, going off that analogy, right. Is like, a lot of times if someone's overly shredded, that means they're sacrificing in a lot of areas. And usually mm -hmm. that's only sustainable for a short period of time. Most people in the fitness world, even competitive bodybuilders will only be able to hold a very shredded physique for a very limited amount of time because of the, the amount of sacrifices it requires. It, it, I mean, they'll sacrifice strength, they'll sacrifice quality of life, um, internal measurements, which is kind of outside my scope of I'm um, like, I know they're especially pro bodybuilders who are who are probably on, you know, supplements, um, they're, they're monitoring internal like functions as well. And so it's a very short period of time that they can actually sustain that. And I think what happens is a lot of times traditional financial advisors, they come in, they look at someone's finances and they say, and they run these like 30 to 50 year projections and the numbers get absolutely ludicrous and unrelatable. And they try and just like create this, this plan that says, okay, do this for the next 30 to 50 years. And a lot of times it's not at one sustainable. It's almost like trying to have someone be shredded for year round without mm -hmm. considering all the sacrifices and how are they going to sustain that diet? Well, it's the same way with the cash flow. It's like, how, like, are you considering what sacrifices are going to need to be made to reach that? And I think that's where the analogy really starts to fit in the sense of um, taking someone's life into account, right? So we, we also, you know, when we're looking at like financially healthy, we're looking at like right now, which is in mm -hmm. a view that a lot of advisors tend to, they tend to take, right? They just want to look way in the future. They look There's at so how many, you might, yeah, how you might be in the future. Right. And so like if I were so I'm working with a fitness coach right now, shout out to Jonathan, a digital barbell. And if I would have started with him and he was like, we're going to have you squat on 500 pounds and like just <laughs> that. Right. Just like start with that. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you're absolutely nuts. Like, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like and that's kind of where traditionally advisors kind of start of like, all right, at 65, you're going to need five million dollars to live off of this much amount off, you know, with this much inflation each year. And it's like, my dude, I don't even know if I'm going to be alive at 65. You know right. what I mean? Like, you don't know how things are going we're, to be. We're we planning for a lot of variables. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to pump the brakes a little bit because I do want to say, like, I don't think you ignore that completely, but I think you have to find an in between of planning for the now financially and focusing on what's in your control and also consider like, what do you need to do to make sure your future self is in a good position, but mm -hmm. not like the perfect situation, right? Because we know things are going to deviate and change over the next 30 years. Like it's just not linear at all. You know what I mean? 
And mm-hmm. so it's not like an IUL projection or an IUL. Uh, <laughs> and that's the problem with projections. You can make them look as pretty as you want. Like mm-hmm. I can make it look really good. We can make it look like Justin's going to squat 500 next year. Yeah. You could show me a line, but <laughs> right. Like, no, like that's a good point though. Like you could show me a spreadsheet where you're like, mm-hmm. I'm going to actually use John. I was just looking at Jonathan's podcast and uh, <laughs> he was, he had a guy on there and they were talking about some method of lifting where you would squat three times a week. Yeah. And you would just go up five pounds every time, right? So, you know, 275, 280, 285, all in one week, right? So you could you could give me this spreadsheet and you could do this calculation that shows me doing 500 at the end of one year or whatever, right? Let's say with three mm-hmm. times a week going up five pounds every day. But when I get in the actual gym, am I going to actually be able to do that? Probably not because I'm not going to recover one. That sounds like it's probably going to work for only a couple of months and it's not going to be sustainable for a 12 plus month period, so at some point I'm going to hit this like burnout phase mm-hmm. and it's going to collapse. Right. And so getting back to what that looks like as a financial plan is right. That proje- projection is going to work for a couple of years for as long as the assumptions are still like accurate. And then life's just going to smack you in the face. Could be in a good way. Could be in a bad way, but life's going to happen. You're going to mm-hmm. lose your job. You're going to have a baby. You're going to buy a house. You're going to uh, buy even, rental real estate. You're going, yeah. Even like the know. past year or so, right? Inflation changed dramatically for, you know, over that time period, interest rates have changed dramatically. Like that's things happen. Right. And, and back to like your squat reference, like you could trip down the stairs. Right. And it's like, it's not going to work. Something's going to come up um things change sometimes that's your priorities right and it's like Mm -hmm. i don't really care to do this anymore like i want to you know i want to focus more on on now right like i don't want to lift or squat 500 anymore like i decided i want to go run a half marathon right which for the record justin would never say um dude you know i mean the other day the other day my wife looks at me and goes yeah i signed up to run the boston marathon but i didn't like I didn't get it in in time on the deadline. I just looked at her and I was like, what? <laughs> she's always, she's always like kind of low key wanted to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be there watching. Awesome. <laughs> You're right. Um, but yeah, your goals are going to change. Your priorities are going to change. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe you no longer want to work that corporate job. Maybe you want to start your own business. You and I, obviously we know all about that. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, let's make this super actionable for people. So yes. What are the habits what are like the three to four habits that you really need to focus on for your financial health, right? I'm going to make a quick fitness analogy before we hop into it. Usually it's like drink more water, mm-hmm. walk 10,000 steps, move three to four days a week, eat a lot of protein, right? Simple, mm-hmm. somewhat quantifiable, boring as hell, yeah. but just do it and it'll work, right? So what's the finance version of that? Where if I just did these three to four things, no matter what my net worth is now, if I did this consistently for the next 30 to 40 years, I'm going to probably be in a pretty good position, right? And then we can figure it out like from there. Yeah. I mean, I'd say avoiding bad debt, right? High interest, high interest credit card debt, if you will, and and maintaining just overall healthy debt level, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We call that a debt rate. Yeah. Call it a debt rate. Saving fifteen to twenty percent, right? Would probably would probably get you there. Um, we call that a savings rate. Yeah, and then investing consistently um, over that over that time period, uh, mm-hmm. which again, I'd I'd almost because again, it can vary so much, right? Especially like the savings, right? We talked about the guy with the six pack. Um, you know, are you, are you doing too much or whatever? I'd almost instead of habits, I'd give five important questions to ask um, on on how to approach this right and starting with kind of the mental side of things right like why is money important to you like what what is it that you want money to provide for you for your family if you have one uh you know what i mean that's really the overarching like goal at least for now right and that can change over time uh like we mentioned and then, you know, are you using your income wisely, right? Like, are you using your income in a way that helps you get towards why money is important to you, right? Um, if you're spending like crazy and, you, you know, you're going shopping or buying shoes, but you're telling me like something else is the most important thing to you, like that 
then you're not using your income wisely. You need to change. Uh, yeah, know. last week we talked about, you know, we, we're not here to tell you how to spend your money, but yep. if you tell us you value one thing and your spending shows you value another, we're going to point out the discrepancy and have that conversation. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And you're either going to change your values or you're going to change your spending or else it's never going to, you know, it's never going to work. Yep. Or you're going to be in that perpetual loop of stress mm -hmm. out. Um, okay. So we have, why is money important to you? Are you using your income wisely? Um, do you have the right mix of assets? Meaning, are you using that income that you're saving? And are you putting it in places that make sense for where you want to be? Right. Um, a good example here is like, are we, some people will put all their savings into their 401k or into a retirement account, right? Cause they want some kind of tax benefit. But if you're someone that wants to retire early or take sabbaticals or, you know, do something, have more freedom from work, if you will, before 59 and a half, before you can tap into those retirement accounts without penalty um, and random other scenarios that are possible, you know, like then putting all your money into your 401k probably doesn't make sense, right? You need some liquidity, something that's easy to access without, without that penalty of, of getting to it. Um, and same thing, like if you're buying rentals and you know I mean? That doesn't fit to the overall picture, like the, the whole combination, I'm not just talking like stock investing. Um, and then, you know, the other one, the next one is, you know, are you taking the right amount of risk? Right. And I think, this one gets ignored quite a bit, um, you know, between how risky are you making your investments um, in your portfolio and are you actually protecting yourself, right? Do you have the right insurance coverages, whether that's life insurance, disability insurance, household liability insurance, right? Like, do you have those in place? Because you can work hard, you can save, you can do all this other stuff. At the end of the day, if you don't have yourself protected, that can all go away in a heartbeat. Um, hit someone driving your car, or whatever, you know what I mean? Something could, could take those assets away. Um, and then the last one kind of back to big picture, right? Is like, what do you need to make work optional or to reach that, that ideal lifestyle for you? Right. Um, and then those, those all kind of add up to, to that. <clears throat> if, <laughs> if you have fallen along at all, these are all pulled from elements as well. So, you know, Justin and I both both use elements with clients with, um, you know, having these conversations and helping to track financial health. Um, I also am on the team. So just fair disclosure there, you know, I have to mention that. Um, but, you know, I think you, I think you cut out there, but I'm assuming you you mentioned elements there. You cut out. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned elements there. You know, we, how we both use it. Um, you know, th those questions are really pulled from elements. Um, you know, and they're a good way to, to look at financial health, right. And see like, are you actually doing okay for where you're at? Um, you know, using some ob objective measure of, of those, uh, metrics and yeah, let me jump in real quick. So yeah. anyone listening, if you're not an advisor, like elements is the financial planning software that, uh, we both use. So Colton actually works for them. Uh, but we, we both yeah. use it in our financial planning practices and the reason we use it and we like it is because it's a very simplistic way for um, us to look at your financial picture right now. Like what we've mm -hmm. been talking about, like take a look at Colton's situation right now and I can look at his savings rate and I can look at his debt rate and I can look at um, what they call a total term. And, you know, that just means basically all of your assets divided by your expenses. Annual spending. Annual spending. So expenses, it includes, yeah. Yeah, includes spending and debt. And so... I can look at that very quickly using their scorecard and I can say, you know, it looks like maybe there's, you know, you know, looking at those five questions that Colton just gave us, like I can look at those, those statistics and say, we might, might have to address one of these. Right. So like, are you using your income wisely was one of those. I can look at the savings rate and the burn rate. Burn rate is what you're spending compared to what you're making. I can look at those pretty quickly and I can say, Hmm we might have an issue here. Like, let, like, let's talk about that question and let's address that now. Um, rather than just come to you and say, Hey, you know, with traditional financial planning software, which we both have used and in, in under the right circumstances, we still use say, mm -hmm. Hey, I ran this scenario projection, you know, you're 35. Now when you're 65, you're going to want to spend $120,000 a year. 
you know, you got to increase your savings by like 50,000 this year. Let's check back with each other in about a year and see if you've done that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's sometimes how it's actually done or, or, Hey, mm-hmm. here's these 50 pages of recommendations we have um, to get you from where you are now at 30 to where you want to be at 65. Uh, let's, let's talk in a year and, and, and see if we need to change these at all. It's basically, uh, I'm, I'm going to pull in another analogy that you and I have been talking about recently. You know, the, the, the map and the GPS, right? Yeah. Um, using some of that software is like, okay, you go on Google Maps, you type your destination, right? Or let's let's say MapQuest for we're, yeah. we're gonna take it old school. You print out your map, right? It tells you the directions you get here and and you know, here's your destination, take these turns, you know, go this far on this road and, and whatever. Whereas, you know, the better way to do it with elements is like, okay, well, Google Maps is gonna tell us where we're at today it's gonna you know tell us hey you got turn coming up let's make it if we miss it cool we just adjust here's a new route um you know what i mean rather than you have to go this exact way there's no other route to get there right maybe you want to make pit stop maybe you want to stop off and you know get some some starbies right or justin wants to stop off and get some uh nuggets and take the breading off who knows that was a joke (laughs) um yeah it's a good analogy right because I would even go a step further and say it's more like the Waze, right? Waze mm-hmm. lets you customize, you know, avoid highways, avoid tolls, um, yeah. collaborate, you know, see what's around you, avoid the police that are waiting to get you with that speeding <laughs> ticket, right? Right. Um, but it adapts, right? That's what Waze does. It adapts real time. It's real time data. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we're going for with financial planning is Real-time data, let's adapt using what's actually happening now. But we know there's a destination, right? Like We're not ignoring that there's a destination, but we're also presenting you with the real-time data of what's going on right now. Yep. Um, that's where I see it heading. I think that's what you and I are trying to do with clients. And also not to ignore the fact that we do tend to work with younger accumulators, right? If you were, if you're 65 listening to this, well, one, I want to know how the heck you found my podcast. Uh, but two, <laughs> if you're 65 and listening to this, uh, thanks to my mother-in-law, then I want to know like, or I want you to know like projections probably are what you need. You know what I mean? Like you, you probably need some real time, like, yeah, this is what we need to do and adapt each year. Um, mm-hmm. But you, you're, you're shifting into a phase of life where you're taking what you've already accumulated and you're living off of that, then projections probably are more suitable for you. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that makes sense. A balance. I don't think it's just projections, but I do yeah, think it's a more was, fitting situation. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I agree. I think, you know, projections do make more sense as you get to that stage, um, at least a couple years out. Right? I still think the 30 years are just mm-hmm. absurd. Um, and, 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 and combining that, you know, with something like, like elements, right. Where it's still the short term, right. Cause you still got to make sure you're financially healthy and look at those metrics, right. Because yeah, you could retire. Um, but if all your wealth or most of your wealth is in that, that real estate that you're living in, you know, you, you got to know that too. Um, but I also think we're just like transitioning a bit. I, I've got my own personal bias here of like, mm-hmm. Most people know that I lost my mom at the age of 40. So like Mm -hmm. I have to balance the idea that tomorrow is not guaranteed with, okay, I also want to like be prepared for, you know, right. And so not being reckless in my present day, but also like, no, I'm not going to sacrifice for 30 years and then just do a traditional retirement. Like I'm not doing Mm -hmm. that. And I think most people that want to work with me are also on board with that as well. Yeah. Um, I think or that's they want to really... have the option, right? They just mm-hmm. want to like get themselves into a situation where maybe they do work for 40 years and then they retire at 65, mm-hmm. but they've built in the option. So it's, it's their choice. They're not forced to do anything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's a really good um, perspective that you bring to those conversations. You know what I mean? Having, having dealt with that or witnessed that firsthand. Um, and, and I think most advisors at least ones that are starting to work with the younger people and that kind of thing. Right. Like I've, I dealt with that with clients at my old firm, you know what I mean? Like the guy retired, got his new Tesla five months later, we get a call from his son that he passed away. Right. Mm-hmm. Didn't get to spend any of his money, do what he wanted to like. Um, so yeah, I, dude, I have a very similar story to that. My cousin 
also passed away at a very young age, 42, mm. uh, maybe 43. He had spent 20 plus years in the army and uh black Hawk pilot, very stressful, very like, you know, a couple divorces, like type yeah. of situation, right? Sacrificed a lot. Mm -hmm. finally after like 22 years was like i'm retiring i'm getting out gets a civilian job in the government like pretty excited for it talking to me about his money situation he wanted to go buy a bmw for a retirement present i'm like don't buy a fucking bmw <laughs> didn't listen right he goes and buys the bmw and within six months he, he was he was no longer with us because he was diagnosed with a um a brain condition that that was causing seizures he had to get like pretty emergent brain surgery and mm -hmm. unfortunately he didn't uh survive the brain surgery and mm -hmm. uh that's kind of changed my perspective in the sense of like maybe buy the car you know what i mean right. like if the car means that much to you because for him mm -hmm. that represented a retirement present to himself for all the years of hard work and before that, I'm like, don't buy the car. Yeah, that's, but it's the, changed, that's the burger it's after my your fitness competition, right? That's the yeah. It's changed my perspective of like maybe buy the car. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it meant a lot to him. And you know, six months later, everything. At least gone he got anyway. to drive it so a little bit. You know, it's hard because you have to balance those those feelings with. But like, don't like, do you want to be 65 and have no money? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so you mm -hmm. have to balance it. It's not all or nothing at all. Uh, but you cannot ignore the fact that like tomorrow is not guaranteed. Yeah. It's a tough spot to be in. Yeah, definitely. It's, you know, how, yeah. How do you not just say, forget it. I'll deal with, I'll deal with that when it comes. Right. And I'm not going to, not going to save or I'm terrified. I'll get to that point and not have anything. So I'm going to save everything. Right. It's like, I know we've, we've probably both seen the extreme with people too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think focusing on financial health mm -hmm. is to avoid both extremes, over saving yep. and under saving. If you're healthy, you're somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think that's where the emphasis of financial health is so important of like finding that balance for a lack of better word. Mm hmm or like that sweet spot, I guess, of living for today and saving for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. To Yeah, to know that you can, you know, maybe do that thing today and not have it be a huge negative impact on tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. You know? Love it. Um, man, I don't have any more to, to add, honestly, to this conversation on financial health. I feel like that was a really good way to summarize yeah. it there. We could probably talk about it all day, but you know, I think yeah. let's wrap it there. Um, if you're listening to this, you want to know more about financial health, reach out. Um, mm -hmm. I think I've got a free assessment from Elements on my website. Um, mm -hmm. If you go, yeah, if you go to a, assistfp.com, there's a free assessment. We've got one on the Attentional Profits website as well, I believe, right? Um, uh, we should. If not, I'll, I'll add it before this gets aired. Yeah, so intentionalprofits.co. And then do you have one on your advisor uh, website? Yeah, yeah. Um, OOTOplanning.com. I have one as well. If you scroll, scroll to the bottom, big old button there. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to hop in, get a free assessment on Elements, see your scorecard and see what your financial health is right now, um, head over, get a free assessment. All You just have to go through like the five to 10 minutes um, of onboarding on the Elements app. It's all right on your phone, which is awesome for mm -hmm. our generation. And, um, you know, Colton or I will, you know, send over a quick little assessment or a quick little summary and mm -hmm. uh, and let you know kind of where you stand in terms of financial health. So if you're interested in doing that, head over to one of those websites and we will get that over to you. Any big plans this weekend? Um, I don't think so, man. We have on. pictures of Santa. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's early. Y'all are doing that real early. Um. Yeah, I don't know if you saw my tweet yesterday. My wife's like, um, playing. Oh yeah, you're Alexa now. I was actually I was gonna change your name in my in my phone and, <laughs> and screenshot and send it to you. Yeah. So if anyone didn't doesn't follow me on Twitter, I you know my wife kept going, Alexa, play Christmas music. She said it like three times. Every time it got louder, and I was like, No, we don't have an Alexa. Alexa. I got one in this room here, and she's Alexa, play Christmas music. <laughs> didn't hear you luckily she heard you the first uh, time anyway so she said it three times getting louder every time and i realized 
Ooh, that's me. I'm supposed to be hitting play on the Christmas music because I had my office door open. So yeah, we've she's she's ready for Christmas. We're we're bumping it. Um, we're doing uh, we're going to Cabela's doing some Christmas photos this weekend with Santa. Right. Um, so that's what we've got on. My uh, I, I actually joked with the kids today, half jokingly. You know, I was like, should we should we just put up the Christmas decorations today since they're out of school? You know, and like why not? And I I did light a Christmas candle this morning. So like I'm I'm kind of. In the candy same cane. Yeah, yeah. But we're we're waiting Honestly, for Canapix for next month. We have a buddy of mine, Mortgage Lender, is doing a client event at a brewery with nice. Santa and you get to take pictures. So nice. You know, tell me you live up. in Oregon with or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell me you live in Oregon without telling me you live in Oregon. Now now we gotta see if it's gonna be hipster Santa or if it's gonna be regular Santa. Oh yeah, I can tell you what it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to wait to find out. We yeah. all know. All right, brother, have a good weekend. All right, man. You too. Are you enjoying the new Intentional Profits podcast? If so, go ahead, leave us a five-star review and a written review and let us know what you think. And in the meantime, if you're interested in joining the wait list for the Intentional Profits community, go to intentionalprofits.co and hop on the wait list and you'll be one of the first to know about the founders, discount, and how to get started and when we are launching and going live. We'll see you next time.